Conversation starters. That's what we do on Arrow.net. A-R-R-O-E dot net. All right, let's pod crash. Episode number 145 is with Ryan Serhant from the podcast Big Money Energy. What's up, man? How are you? Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Dude, uh, you, you talk about my favorite thing, customer service. I mean, that that is a big thing inside your heart. Yeah, it's got to be. Otherwise, I have no business. <laughs> but, you know, there, there are so many different levels of customer service, and the way that it's being taught is what scares the hell out of me. But listening to your podcast, though, you kind of give people that, that vision of, hey, look, you can do it better. It, you have to have it, but you've got to learn how to do it better. Of course, thousand percent. If you're not customer first, then you are a blacksmith. <laughs> you know, it's what it's interesting you say that because you know I always because well, I'm blessed with the opportunity to go to universities to talk about broadcasting, and I always tell them that this is not about you; it's about your listener. And they go, "Well, yes. they didn't pay me to be here." And I said, "You know what? They did. You're, you're gonna. It's good. The payoff is up the road, but but yeah, they're they're going to pay off for you." Yes, a thousand, a thousand percent. I mean, I think that, you know, I, you know, my customer though, in my business, you know, I'm in the real estate business. We're based in New York city mm-hmm. is, is a tricky one because it's, you know, the, the revenue is derived from people who buy and sell and develop residential real estate. But my real customer is the real estate agent as the owner and operator of a, a real estate firm. You know, that's, that's who I cater to. I need to make sure they're happy. They come first before me, before all, um, And I want to be the most customer centered, you know, sales business ever. You know, I think that's a, uh, a very, very good position to drive to and totally hard to do. In, in building up that relationship, will you, will you ever do a, an episode based on things that you really shouldn't bring up that are cliche? For instance, like I'm so tired of that middle person saying, I appreciate you or, or you to man or you rock. I, it's like, it's like, I want to have a better and deeper relationship with my customers as In fact, I don't even call them customers. I call them guests. They are my guest. Yes. I think that. Uh, uh, I would love to have more people on the podcast that can talk about customer service. So far, we've been focusing on, you know, entrepreneurs, Mm -hmm. right? People that went from zero to hero, kind of like, what was that struggle like? What what were you afraid of? Because it's, you know, it's, it's, it's comforting um, and refreshing to hear brutally honest stories (laughs) from people who are very successful for anybody else that is building, struggling, creating, or just starting, you know, and I I know I'm one of those people, you know, I I started my business uh, last September, middle of COVID, New York City shut down, like, you know what, I'm going to do this right now. And it was scary. And it's still scary. I mean, there's a lot of things that I don't know yet. And I know that my my audience is in a, 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 you know, a similar situation. And so, you know, the stories that our, our, you know, our guests tell are super inspirational and really exciting to hear, like, you know, Matt Kalish, who is an upcoming uh, uh, upcoming guest, um, and he's like one of the co-founders of DraftKings, mm. which is worth over ten, which is worth over ten billion dollars now, right? And one of the stories he told, which he's never told anyone before, was in their early days. You know, they they had like two weeks left of cash mm. in the bank, and what do you do? <laughs> like, what 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 do I do? You know, we're gonna run out of money. I'm not going to be able to pay people. Um, the business is going to totally fold. What do we do? And it was like an all out scramble to find an investor to come in and believe in the vision that wasn't really proven yet, like to, 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 to put it out there. And, you know, the, the rest, as they say, is history. But in the moment, those are sleepless nights. In the moment, you can't eat because you're nauseous and you're afraid. Um, and every founder that I, I talk to has has those feelings and those moments and those war stories, which just makes you feel good to know that, hey, it's not easy for everybody. You know, everyone goes through those types of struggles and this is how they got through it. Yep. And so keep that in mind when you're building your own thing. The first thing I do is I grab my defrag journal. I start breaking it down, breaking it down and trying to understand what what was the, the, the walk that I took to get into this situation and how can we walk peace? In other words, I try to plan it out inside on the paper rather than sit there and worry over it and force myself into, uh, you know, I, I believe in meditation, but you can over meditate. Yeah. 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 I wish I had time to meditate. I should probably (laughs) meditate more. Um, but you know, it is, uh, I, I agree with you, uh, a hundred percent. Um, but listen, it's a, it's an exciting time to be alive. It's an exciting time to be in a customer centered business. It's an exciting time to be in sales. Like people are, are happy right now, all things considered, you know, we are, we're coming out of a, a tough time. And so this is the calm, 
you know, and the excitement and the blue skies after the storm. Um, and it's not going to last forever because nothing ever does. Market cycles come and go, weather comes and goes. Um, and so, you know, when it's when it's good, soak it up. Yeah. That's kind of our position right now. How, how do you feel, though, as a business leader in the way that when the when the headlines and oh, it could be fake news or whatever, but they call it the great resignation where you've got four million people yeah. that walked away from their jobs. I mean, that, that you know, I, I don't want us to walk into another recession or de- or a depression because people said, I don't like my job anymore. Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, the the statistics I think are misleading Mm -hmm. because that's the headline because it gets clicks. And I think what we've seen for the last 10 years is news, news media and social media is driven by clicks. Mm -hmm. So if the real story is that people are leaving W2 jobs to start their own businesses because now they can from their phone. Well, that's kind of exciting. Oh, you know, what's going to get me more clicks people are resigning their jobs and quitting like never before the great resignation and bold and red and bloody. (laughs) Um, I'll click that. Oh my, you know, it's like, it's like reading the, you know, like the trade magazines. It's like, you don't, you don't read about good things. You know, CNBC had the greatest ratings they ever did when they had the death clicker, you know, at the bottom, right. How many people, Oh, another person just died. Let's bring on someone to talk about it. When things are good, what do you talk about? Happiness? Nah, people aren't going to tune into that because they're happy and they're out They're on a bike. You know, they're, they're, they're going for a walk. They don't need to sit here. And so I think we just have to be very careful about where we get our news, how we uh, digest information and the great resignation or so. So we hear it is, is, is along lines of everything we saw last year, right? COVID was an accelerator for everything. And so 4 million people, and I think a lot more said to themselves because they had time to think about it. Finally, uh, why am I selling shoes at Foot Locker? I've always wanted to yep. X, whatever that is, and they're doing that. People aren't quitting their jobs and becoming homeless. They're not resigning from their jobs and doing nothing and sitting at home all day. Right? They're they're going out and they've got courage to do what they've always wanted to do. And last year told them, you better do it now because life is short. You know why? Because this person and this person got sick and they didn't know it and they did die. Yep. So let's make the best use of our time on this planet as we can. Last September, I not this year, but last year, I, m- I missed people so bad that I had to find where the people were and it wasn't just bumping into them on the street. So I took up a job at a grocery store because I've never had a real job before. And so to be there in front of real people, my God, Ryan, I am learning so much by just being a listener. Yeah. You know what? It's something that's funny you say that. You know, I uh, I've written two books. My first book was called Sell It Like Sirhant, and it turned into a TV show on Bravo, and it's turned into a big online sales course for salespeople all around the world. Second book was Big Money Energy, which is the name of the the podcast yes, yep. that I, and I wrote, and I wrote it during uh, during quarantine last year. But in the first one, I talked to people because to learn how to sell one of the greatest traits you need to learn and most people have a really hard time doing it is something that they teach you in theater right in acting school which is what i i i went i studied to be an actor from 10 years old to to when i ran out of money when i was 23. (laughs) right and then all of a sudden i was like nope now i'm a real estate agent this is fine i i I don't want to eat ramen and sleep on the streets um and what they teach you is you have to learn to listen to respond Mm -hmm. instead of listening to reply. So many people ask questions with what you're going to say next already in the back of your mind that you don't even listen to people. How many times have you asked somebody, Hey, you know, Hey, I'm I'm Ryan. What's your name? They say something and two seconds later, you're like, what's that guy's name? (laughs) Because you weren't, you weren't listening to respond to their answer. You were listening to reply because you already knew what you're going to ask next. And you don't even want to be in the situation and just let's keep this moving. Another conversation, blah, blah, blah. And that's why we leave parties, you know, and we're like, what did, what you say? Who did I meet? Yeah, what was that guy? Right. Oh, oh, I met her. But, you know, and it's the same thing in sales. If you listen to people and you respond to what they say, you can give them the best customer service, but you have to be willing to put the customer first. You have to put their response before your reply. Mm-hmm. Super, super key. Yeah. It's customer solution. That's, that's, that's what I base everything on is, okay. You know, you you greet the customer or the guest and all of a sudden it's like, I need to find the solution immediately because their time is so short with me. Thousand percent. One thousand percent. 
When, when you sit down and talk with someone like Jillian Michael, I mean, first of all, I, I invested a lot of energy in this because I love her philosophy of building freedom. I live by the mantra, I don't have a job, I have a choice. My choice is I'm going to show up in this building today. And so therefore, I own my choices. I love it that you can bring out the humanism of someone like Jillian Michael. Yeah, thank you. Um, thank you. I appreciate that. Uh, Jillian was awesome. Um, uh, you know, she was a lot of fun to talk to and so, so real. You know, I think yep. of everyone I've interviewed so far, I think everyone's super honest and real, but I mean, you know, I, I've talked to a lot of people. I'm sure you have too. They have great media training. <laughs> you know, they're like politicians. <laughs> like, so how was your Monday? And they're like, you know, Monday was great. You know why, Ryan? Because we just started this part of the business. And it, it, it we, we do that business on lots of Mondays. And before you know it, you're like, what did I ask you? Um, but with Jillian, like, I asked her a question and she responded directly. You know, she talked about the ups and the downs. Yep. She talked about lawsuits. She talked about, you know, negative press and everything that has made her who she is. And I'll, I'll tell you, she's by far the happiest, most self, you know, uh, uh, aware person, most grateful kind of founder that I've spoken to, um, I think in a long, long, long time. Mm -hmm. you, you talk about those those trained answers and stuff like that. I think that's one of the reasons why I like talking to the contestants on The Voice on NBC, because they're not trained. They're everyday people. And it's fun to sit yeah. there and get real, honest to God responses. Yeah, that's what, and that's what I love about this platform. And I'm sure you do too. And that's what I love about you know, my podcast and the opportunity that I have with iHeart to, to do it and create it and put it out there is I get to ask questions yeah. to yeah. founders of large businesses and big businesses uh, that they would never ordinarily be asked. And I force them to respond, you know, and I want to know like in a safe environment, um, you know, what did you go through and how did you do it? Why? And why did you do it? Like, why did you take that pivot? How did you have the courage to do that at that time you know and there's there's uh you know it, it can be very very scary for anyone you talk about the great resignation like i said a lot of these people aren't quitting just to quit they're they're quitting to pursue something yeah. else that'll make them more fulfilled sometimes it's another job you know i've seen that even in my own business in the last 18 months i've had people who are great say you know what ryan um, i love what i've been doing you're great um but this is my two weeks notice <laughs> because i found an opportunity um, in a totally different industry and, and I got to go try it. Yep. And they never would have done that pre COVID because it's way too risky. Um, you know, and so it's like people now have the opportunity to create something for themselves in a way that they never have had before, which is why I say it's like an amazing time to be alive, to create, to build, uh, and to refocus on the people. See, and when you talk like that, right away, my mind went to Scott Shea. I mean, here's a guy who built a dang bank in the middle of a pandemic. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. Yep, yep, yep. And you know, his story was so interesting. I think they're actually like selling right now for some massive amount of money to <laughs> to to another to another industry. But they are they're probably the most individual customer centric business uh, uh, you know, bank business that I've ever seen. Like they, they personally call all their clients, you know, they personally look at all of the the loans that they do. Like they are, they're a small business bank based in New York city. That is really, really, really cool. And, um, he's a super unique guy, Scott, you know, that was a, that was a really fun episode. And for anybody who's religious, I think that, uh, you'll, you'll really like that episode because we talk about kind of how religion makes its way into how you operate yep. as yep. a business leader. Yep. You know, the I, I love me some terrestrial radio, but it seems like uh, talk radio anymore is all based on the U.S. government is going to take your money, this, this, this and this. And I feel like they're, they're developing a sense of fear with those who have got uh, you know some stock and some money that's put away. How do we yep. get people and lead people beyond those commercials on the radio that that are inciting fear? Switch it. Switch it to the music. There you go. <laughs> Change it. Don't listen. Block out the noise. Listen, fear is a money maker. Yep. People spend money when they're afraid. They're nervous because they want to fix that feeling in their stomach and spending money makes it feel better. That's what we were just talking about. Like we, you know, if 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 people were talking about how good things are all the time, you don't really spend money right. because okay, I guess things are great. I don't really need that to make myself feel better. But man, if if the government's coming out, if I got to do if I got to think about that, I, I need help, right? I, I need somebody else to advise me. I need to go buy that product. I need to get this. I need to go out here. So like fear is used to uh, drive consumers to spend money. 
And it's all along the lines of basically uh, convincing listeners and viewers of the fact that they're not good enough. If you believe that you're not good enough, then you're going to buy anything because you want to be good enough. Um, and if you look at any ad out there, that kind of through line plays through, even in pharmaceutical ads, right? You, you, you feel like you, you know, you're out of breath. Yeah. That medicine might be for you. And man, maybe I'm, maybe I'm, maybe I need to fix that because I'm, I'm, I'm not good enough as a dad, you know, and I need to be able to play catch with myself. You know, I, damn, I, I, I get that medicine when maybe you just should stop eating burgers. You know? <laughs> like, who, who knows what it is? Um, uh, but we need to think for ourselves, you know, like I, 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 I get very nervous about the future and people just doing what they're told and believing what they hear and not, not taking in information and, uh, and thinking for yourself, yeah. right. And making your own decision on, on any individual topic. I think that's, that's going to be key to our survival as a species. The, the image of the average person with, with lots of money, millionaires, billionaires, it, the image is, is that I see a lot of people with money that have holy shoes or they're not wearing beautiful jeans and things like that. I mean, I think, yeah. are, are they downsizing their, their view because they don't want people to know? Or is it, damn it, I just want to feel good and I'm going to dress up in whatever I want if it's comfortable? <laughs> I, 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 uh, it's a good question. I think it's a little bit of both. I think it's different for everybody. Um, uh, but you know, I, I've always looked at downsizing how you dress, not as an indication of, Hey, I'm wealthy. I don't, I don't want you to know, yeah. but it, what it, the message it really sends is I care more about me than you mm. because I, I'm dressed, I'm dressing for me. My respect in this moment right now is for me, whether you like it or not. And I think there's a, there, there's, there's kind of a, a you know, a, a stubborn nobility to that because it's like, I don't care about what anybody else thinks. I'm going to be me and I'm going to live the best life I possibly can. And I, I respect some of that. Um, but I, if you are in a customer based business, if you're in sales, if you, if you need other people in your life, like I've always just felt that. I'm going to do better by, you know, putting myself first. Yes. Yeah. But, uh, being respectful to others in front of me and letting them know that I, uh, I'm here for them. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like a small anecdote for that is, you know, I'm a, I'm, I'm a real estate broker in New York city. Okay. I sell very expensive apartments and houses to very, very wealthy people. The wealthy people that I sell to can afford anything at any time. It doesn't matter. Yep. I do well for myself, but I'm not, I don't have a billion dollars in checking like some of these people. <laughs> um, you know, I I have a Cadillac Escalade, super classic, nice car, but it's an Escalade. Um, and I have a driver who drives it because I need to be constantly productive. And that was an investment that I made into my business eight years ago. Um, and it was one of the best investments that I've ever made, to be honest. A lot of other top real estate brokers in New York City have have Bentleys and, micro and Benzes That's and it. fancy cars. Yeah. But when they show up to meet their clients, some clients may say, cool, you're doing great. Some clients show up and say, how come my broker has a nicer car than I do? Yep. Like where, where's my broker spending their money? Um, and it can be alienating. You know, I have a, I have a Escalade the same way like your Uber black might have an Escalade <laughs> to pick you up at the airport. Um, and that is, I think, you know, shows respect to the clients that I work with that, Hey, I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to make you hoof it. Right. We're not walking. We're not taking the subway, but also I I'm, I'm as luxury as I need to be, uh, to keep everyone I work with happy. Wow. I, I love how genuine you are. I love your podcast. I know that it's, it's one of those. My, my time of listening to you is usually at 10 o'clock at night because I've digested the day and I need the motivation that you send through that through those waves, man. And I just, I'm just so oh, proud thanks. of you for giving yourself permission to even step into this 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 category called podcasting. It's uh, it is totally different and pretty wild and and I'm new to it, but I I really thank you for saying that and for anybody else that's uh, that's listening, uh, give Big Money Energy uh, a listen on iHeart. It's uh, put my put my my soul into it and there's a lot of really deep, honest com conversations that I think are incredibly inspirational for anybody, not just people in sales or entrepreneurs. So true. You got to come back to the show anytime in the future, man. I mean, seriously, the door is always going to be open for you. Thanks, dude. Well, you be brilliant today, okay? You too.